Hello, everybody. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot I had my glasses on. <laughs> Accidents happen with live TV. Anyhow, thank you all for coming. Uh, let's talk about liquidity lowdown. And that is, for the first time, we now see signs on chain of a supply crunch. But before we get into all that, we've got a lot of other Bitcoin news to cover in Bitcoin Daily. A shout out as well to Patreon, uh, Jay Hodler. Literally, you gave me eight years of life. I can retire next year. Awesome. And Ali simply just joined Patreon. Welcome in, Ali. Hey, everybody. Just remember, as well, in the markets, they have been the most crazy 18 months. But it's not what you make, it's what you keep. So if you have all of a sudden enough to retire on, take some off the table and lock that away. Okay, that's the most important thing. Let's jump in. Bitcoin Daily Playlist here afterwards if you just want Bitcoin-only content. Now, 22 days to go. God, it's going so fast. We'll be down to teens soon. Double digits. And then single digits. And then it's going to be crazy. And a shout out to Kathy Wood. This is a great piece of history from Rizzo. And a shout out to Sanjay as well for sharing. This is Kathy Wood 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, she predicted the price of Bitcoin could go to 500 bucks. And they thought she was crazy. <laughs> 10 years later, she predicts the Bitcoin price will go to $3.8 million. And uh, back then, exactly 10 years ago, she said Bitcoin could go viral. And she sandbags a lot, too. That's an important piece of history. And credit where credit is due, she nailed it. And a lot more. Um, another fun news too, the ETFs from Hey Apollo. The great thing about these Bitcoin ETFs is that, you know, there is a consistent bid every single day. It's what I've been saying for months. BlackRock and Fidelity are good for 5,000 Bitcoin today, tomorrow, every day, next week. And simply, there aren't enough coins to provide them with what they need to fill their bags, everybody. These two ETFs alone suck in more than six, soon to be 12 times the daily issuance of Bitcoin. There is not enough to go around. Supply crunch is coming. Wait till you see the charts at the very end. Now, um, a lot of uh, last week was rough. Monday was okay, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was brutal. And even Monday was a bit weak. But yesterday, Tuesday, <laughs> the ETFs recovered half in one day of what was lost in the previous five days. So all of the grayscale dumpage was erased in a day. And based on where we are today, it's a little bit volatile, but we'll explain why that is volatile right now in the next slide. But that's crazy. Recovery happens real fast in this space. Now, last night, I made a gutsy tweet because looking at the chart, I said, we're going to go through 71K tonight. It didn't happen till like 5 a.m. And Bitcoin price shot up all the way to about 71,800. And then, of course, what happens? Well, in 40 minutes, it went all the way down to, let me see, 68.7. So what they're doing is they're wrecking the shorts on the way up and then wrecking the longs on the way down. And that all happened in 40 minutes. And that is basically one, two, three nearly $4,000 swing in 40 minutes just to pull in people's leveraged longs. They can see where people are leveraged and they just go grab it. And Bitcoin Munger uh, supported that too. Coming after the shorts like clockwork, still a large cluster of shorts sitting at 74,000. Their days are numbered. Their days are numbered. When we break above 74K, which will be another new all-time high, they will get wrecked and they'll be forced to cover. That'll cause a short squeeze and we'll go very quickly to $80,000. And that's just the way markets work. It's almost too predictable, which is scary. Anyway, uh, let's talk about other stuff. There's more money coming. You think there's Fidelity and BlackRock? Well, Morgan Stanley, I hinted at this last week, but now a $1.5 trillion AUM platform will be launching ETFs in the next two weeks. And uh, earlier this month, Stanley filed with the SEC that 12 of their funds may buy Bitcoin ETFs as well. So not only are they filing ETFs, but they'll be buying ETFs in their funds as well. I have a running list of all the funds that will be doing auto allocation, which means auto bids into the space. It's so scarce. Unless 
the retail people are selling to YOLO and to meme coins, there is no supply. The price will go absolutely nuts this time around. Uh, let's look at another cool thing as well. This is, shows you whale holdings. Bitcoin whale holdings are growing at the highest monthly pace ever in the history of Bitcoin. Up 12% month over month. The previous high was 11.1% back in January 2021 when the price was $36,000 in January 2021. That was the beginning of the rampage. Remember, in 2021, we went from 36K to 67K in a very short window of time by April, like literally weeks. We're waiting for that moment to happen. Now, another interesting news, Bitcoin perspective. This shows you how small Bitcoin is as a percentage of global wealth today. 0.2%. And remember, a lot of the wealth is concentrated amongst the top 0.5% of people. They're going to wake up real soon and say, we need to allocate. Hence, I did an analysis on the billionaires on the planet last week. And I'll share that again in a minute because there's other stuff happening that you need to be aware of too. First of all, Asia is ramping up from Bitcoin Archive. Hong Kong-based fund managers, VSFG and value partners have applied to launch a spot Bitcoin ETF. This is on top of 22 existing filings. That makes 24 filings and they're all launching next month. And they're probably already stacking right now because it wouldn't be prudent to wait till the halving occurs and then go buy Bitcoin <laughs> because it's so scarce. If you are building a bag or a position or an ETF, you want to seed that early. You want to stack some now. So all this price undulations, you know, we are now 69K. It's all noise. And there was other noise today about Coinbase and the SEC. It's noise. Okay, the SEC has no credibility. They, yeah, they'll file lawsuits and stuff, but it won't stick in the end. It hasn't done so far. Now, back to Asia and why it's so important. This is from Hey Apollo and Caitlin Long. Um, update, Hong Kong Bitcoin ETFs are expected to be approved in Q2. That is actually April, not Q2, April itself. But what's interesting about this is they are doing in-kind versus cash creations. And that means you don't take cash, put it in an ETF, buy shares, and have the ETF buy Bitcoin. It will be Bitcoin direct deposit and pull out, which is the logical thing to do. It's nice to see that Asia is doing it properly. But what Caitlin Long said here is it also includes the ability to withdraw Bitcoin. No more paper Bitcoin, everybody. And if this is true, it is true. It'll be huge. If, by the way, they still have some piping to build in the background to make this happen. But per Caitlin, it would be ironic given that Hong Kong, not the US, would be doing it. Meanwhile, US banks would watch from the sidelines as they're left in the dust. Again, it's logical to do this. Bitcoin is money. The whole step of fiat to ETF shares to Bitcoin and T plus one, it's absolutely illogical. Whenever I get confused, I imagine if I'm an alien in space, I look down and I say, does this make sense? Without any preconceived notions. And if it doesn't, it's illogical. That's a long-winded way of saying first principles. Anywho, back to Asia, because a lot of money is about to hit this market. And had tipped well for this chart. Asia is approximately 84.68% of the crypto spot volume on planet Earth. Let's call that 85%. North America, 10%. Europe, 4%. Where is Europe? I know the people in my audience are probably all of that 4%. South America, 0.8%. It's all Asia. I shared this last year. It took a lot of people by surprise, and it's still the same today. Why do we care about Asia? Maybe they just trade a lot of pennies. No, they don't. They have a lot of billionaires, which I shared as well last week. Number of billionaires. China, 495. US is top with 735. Uh, Hong Kong, 66. And then Taiwan, 52. By the way, I am working on a similar metric for millionaires. It's a little more difficult. But believe me, so far, there are over 63, maybe 64 million millionaires. And I'm not even counting all the new MicroStrategy millionaires in the community here, because there's at least a thousand or more of those as well. So it's, you know, millionaires have become very, very commonplace in this day and age, too. Um, in addition, 
this is interesting because this ties back to hardness of Bitcoin and how fiat is so frail. Everybody, breaking news, the yen hits a 34-year low. And as I said before, their pension funds are sniffing around, their central banks are sniffing around Bitcoin. They need Bitcoin more than they know. And the currency dipped 0.3% uh, to 153 yen per dollar. I remember for years and years I was trading uh, dollar yen between 98 and 110 for the longest time in the 90s. But shortly passing the 152.95 level that prompted Japan to intervene into the markets in October 2022. The Bank of Japan is running out of choices, short of purchasing the currency themselves to prop it up after their first interest hike. Again, fragile, very fragile, very scary. Um, and speaking of money and fiat as well, this is kind of crazy. The Fed made their biggest loss ever, and they print money for free? It's complete madness. Federal Reserve uh, generated its biggest loss in the history of $114 billion last year. If this doesn't tell you the whole system is a house of cards, I do not know what will. Imagine you at home having a money printer and still losing $114 billion. Get it? Okay, hopefully. Hopefully you get it. Anyway, let's look at the black hole, all the ETF action, and how big it was. Day 52. It doesn't sound like a lot of days, but it feels like an eternity. And uh, again, cast your eyes in the bottom right-hand corner, the grayscale orange. That's a light orange, minus 212. Not a bad dump, considering that's pretty much equivalent to what BlackRock did. And for two days in a row, Fidelity had massive days, 280 million yesterday, 262 the day before, really big. And what's also super impressive is ARK, BTCO, um, Vanek, HODL, all these other guys had really big days too. So the net positive was nearly 420 million bucks. Okay, really good, really good. Uh, this is the view of all of these different funds. The Three big ones, grayscale and green, going up. We like to see it going up. Uh, red, BlackRock catching up with Fidelity. By the way, BlackRock is normally way higher than Fidelity. But you can see for two days in a row, Fidelity has smoked BlackRock. So BlackRock is expected to have a big day this week. I just don't know when. Uh, they are in, in red right there. And blue is Fidelity. In terms of the money flow, very, very positive. Nearly half a billion yesterday. That's the break-even point there. It's very rare we have a negative day. Very rare. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine negative days out of 52. So call it a sixth of the time it's negative. And it's all due to grayscale. Okay? The big guys, they don't ever redeem anything so far. Um, now, money flow perking up again. Yay. It was down last week. So last week was a nasty week, but you can see how big that big blue spike is from yesterday. And $24.3 billion into the nine new ETFs. That includes the nearly $15 billion out of Grayscale. And 448,000 Bitcoin are in the new ETFs, including the 265,000 out of Grayscale as well. And the Grayscale dumpage is a visual. The important thing here is that purple trend line. That's the dumpage since inception. We are now above trend. Okay, all the big flushes, I think, are gone. At the very beginning, the big ones were FTX then DCG, then DCG again. Uh, the, these are not retail selling. These are the speculators selling. And that hopefully will be gone. All right. And finally, the amount of Bitcoin taken from the system yesterday, 5,976. Let's call that 6,000. Remember, only 900 are being issued a day by the miners. And only about 25% of that is even being sold. All right. Supply crunch, anybody? It's right there, right there. I need to create an average line, trend line for this chart too. Remind me to do that later. All right, let's look at two charts before we go. Uh, first of all, this is very important. The sell side liquidity for Bitcoin from CryptoQuant just hit a new all-time low. And sell side liquidity is currently much lower than historical levels relative to demand. So we have a perfect storm here happening, everybody. We have unprecedented demand crashing into unprecedented low liquidity on the sell side. 
Okay, far more buyers than sellers. The price you're seeing now does not reflect the truth of exactly what's happening here. It will. Just needs to be shaken out a little bit more as well. Citizen Jewel Sport, thank you so much for coming. Did I miss anybody else? Nope. Um, and thank you as well to the mods in the chat and Piper and the whole team here. Uh, somebody had a 20th. Yes, Citizen Jewel Sport, this is your 20th super on live stream. Thank you so much. Final chart of the day, and I'll let you go. And hopefully we can pump out another one this afternoon. But this shows you the combination of not only the supply side drainage, but in combination with the demand. And the demand, of course, is fueled by the spot ETFs, but now retail is also coming in. And it is rapidly depleting the sell side liquidity. So pink is the amount of demand for Bitcoin. Blue line down is the sell side liquidity. It's almost at zero. Guess what happens when there's nothing left to sell? A lot of people say, well, if, if there's nothing left to sell, won't people lose interest and go away to a different asset? No, 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 no. Price will go higher and that'll drive more attention, which will drive more demand, which means price will go higher. And eventually people will be selling their Bitcoin at 100,000 and 250,000 and 500,000 and on to for, I think Raul Paul calls it lifestyle chips, you know. I need a house, I need a new car, I need whatever. But remember, the opportunity cost of selling at this stage of the game is extremely high, everybody. Extremely high. Thank you all for coming. I will see you all, hopefully, this afternoon. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And uh, quick one today. Only 17 minutes. Must be a new record, considering we had 32 slides. Thanks all for coming. Thank you to the mods in the chat, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.